What's up guys, 30IR here, bringing you gaming in 4K and beyond since 2011. I've been wanting to do a video on um, my new CPU, the uh, i7-6950X, for a while. Um, I did record some video earlier about it, but I just haven't released it. I thought I'll just do a new one. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you guys about the pros and cons of getting a top-of-the-line uh, multi-core CPU so as far as I'm concerned on the uber rig I've had uh, a top-of-the-line CPU um, I believe since uh, the 990x was released many many years ago I think that was like back in 2010 or 2011 um, and uh, the 990x was uh, a six-core CPU um, and, uh, you know, then I believe the 3960X came out, but I actually waited to get the 3970X, and I actually still have that CPU on the, uh, Asus ROG Swift rig, and, uh, it's going pretty strong, but, uh, then I skipped the generation, and I got the 5960X, and had that for a while, and just recently, uh, sold it, and, got the 6950X which is a monster uh, 10 core uh, CPU with 20 threads jeez that was terrible um, but the point was the 5960X was an octa core CPU with 16 threads and um, uh, you know the 6950X is a, is a deca core a 10 core with 20 threads and the main reason I, I like getting the top of the line CPU with as many cores as possible for the desktop and not workstation platform uh, is uh, because I do a lot of uh, photo and video editing and I do gaming on this rig so um, you know it's if I were to do uh, just gaming or like a, a little bit of you know Photoshop and maybe like a lot of you know like programming and um, you know surfing the internet watching movies and just gaming then uh, there are many better options out there instead of spending uh, a ton of money on the 6950X. The biggest thing that people, you know, were shocked about about this 10-core CPU, as was I, was the uh, price. Usually, the Extreme Edition CPUs from Intel have been at a $1,000 uh, price range, and the 990X was a thousand, the 3970X was a thousand, and the 5960X was also that price, but the new 6950 has basically jumped up to uh, 1750, and it's uh, a huge jump. That's like a 70% increase in price, and obviously you're not going to get like a 70% increase in performance uh, across the board. In fact, um, you know this particular CPU, the 6950X that I have, is overclocked to 4.3 gigs, uh, and I believe it's uh, somewhat equivalent in many tasks to a 5960X at about 4.7 uh, gigs so if you have a 5960x that can o overclock to 4.7 then you've re really gotten a, a golden chip and it should perform really well in many many tasks that you throw at it but uh, nonetheless you know I'm really happy with this uh, CPU because many of the modern games that are coming out especially the ones that are going to be using DX12 like uh, Battlefield 1 which is coming out uh, in the next couple of months they're going to be using a lot of uh, the the cores and threads that the CPU has to offer. So if you if you're one of those people who are, who are like, oh, I'm just going to get a quad core, you know, CPU that's better in gaming. Yeah, it is for many of the DX11 games and some of the older games. And if you don't do a lot of multitasking, then you're right. It does do a better job for a lot less than the 6950X. I believe the 6700K, for instance, is like a $300 CPU. Whereas the 6950X is like 1732 or something like that, 1723, I believe, is the retail price, and different e-tailers have it uh, listed for different uh, prices, you know, plus or minus 50. Uh, but anyway, I love the CPU because, um, for instance, when I play certain games, like when I'm playing Battlefield 4 or even GTA 5 or some of the other games, I'm actually. Um, like rendering video so I render like 4k 60 FPS video at a high bit rate while I'm playing another game and so you know like although I'm not doing it right now I could be 
rendering a 4K video, uh, you know, with many effects and uh, like really stressing the hell out of the CPU on all the threads and playing this game at 5K and maintaining a great frame rate and, you know, without any lag whatsoever. So that is one of the most amazing things about the, these multi-core CPUs. When you have 10 cores and 20 threads, there's literally very little you can throw at it that'll bring it to its knees. And uh, the cool thing is I did that with the 5960X as well. I used to play Battlefield 4 all the time while I was rendering video, 4K video I should add, and it would never skip a beat. And I like rarely ro lost any um, FPS and there were you know hardly any drops in performance or whatever. So uh, it's just an amazing thing when you can basically multitask and throw so many intensive tasks at the CPU and it just like just crushes all of it. You're never going to get that with a, a quad core CPU. And a lot of people I've noticed, you know, online are saying like, well, you're never going to do that anyway. It's like, yeah, but that's not the fucking point. Like if you're, if you're not a person who doesn't, you know, uh, need to render video or doesn't need any um, major CPU intensive tasks then don't get a fucking 6950X that, that CPU is not meant for you but if you're into rendering video doing a lot of photo editing and gaming then there's nothing better you can get on the market than the 6950X right now so you know it, it's kind of like analogous to the argument that um, oh well you know if I just mod my Mustang um, and I throw in like a turbo on it or whatever, which is equivalent to like overclocking in a way Then uh, you know, I can be just as fast as a, a, a Ferrari or a Lamborghini that costs like five times as much. Well, that's not the point You know nobody who buys a Lamborghini says it's gonna beat every car out there or It's gonna beat every Corvette or, or Mustang or whatever you can think of you get it because it's a Lamborghini or a Ferrari for other reasons yeah, it goes fast too, but it can do so many other things. Um, you know, uh, picking up chicks is going to be harder in a Mustang than it is in a Lamborghini. And trust me, I speak from experience. Um, the other thing is, a 6950X, however, is not going to help you get any chicks. Uh, it'll just grow your e -peen though. But other than that, you know, you're actually getting great performance boosts uh, if you're multitasking, like I do. So if you're, you know, uh, doing AutoCAD stuff, if you're doing 3D modeling, uh, if you're into rendering videos and doing intensive Photoshop work, um, you know, having a, a large number of cores and being able to overclock them to a pretty decent speed is, is a fantastic experience. Now, if you're into just gaming or, as I said before, just a few tasks, then by all means get like a cheaper CPU, save yourself some money, you know, and, and overclock the hell out of it to like... Um, 4.8 or whatever 4.9 gigs if you can but if you're not into um, you know just gaming and you actually have a life and do other stuff then uh, having a multi-core CPU is the way to go and on the uber rig I'll always be getting the top of the line CPU no matter what so um, yeah on the Asus ROG Swift rig I guess I could have gotten a 6700k and I might upgrade that later but since I already have the 3970X, which is a great, um, you know, six-core CPU, um, you know, it performs fantastically well, and I get all the benefits of multitasking plus a really fast speed. I overclocked that CPU to 4.8, um, and now I've lowered it to about 4.5, uh, and it just, you know, it performs really well. Anything I throw at it is, is not an issue. But um, I just love the 6950X with its stock turbo boost speed of four gigs uh, with 10 cores guys just imagine that right and most people have hyper threading on uh, there are a lot of like purists out there who say you have to turn off hyper threading in order to get like the best gaming performance and in certain games that may be true like uh, if you're using only say if you have like a quad core cpu and you turn off hyper threading then a game that uses four cores would actually perform slightly better than if you had hyper threading on but, you know, I always have hyper-threading on, and because I multitask, having 12, 16, or 20 threads just shred every task you throw at it, it's just a pleasure to see and experience. Uh, and I, I swear to God, like, the coolest thing is, like, when I'm playing 
a game at 5K, maxing the shit out of it, and I'm rendering 4K 60 FPS video while that's happening, there's really like, it just brings a smile to my face every time. Um, it's just a lot of fun and, um, you know, it's just a, a slight step below the, the professional Xeon uh, series that you can get which um, of course costs like maybe twice or three times or even more than the 6950X but that's for professionals who you know need to do a lot of uh, like server type work and if they have uh, you know server farms or whatnot uh, you know if you work for like Autodesk then you know obviously they're not going to be getting a 6950X but then again you know I'm just an individual buying it for my own pleasure so there's no reason to get the Xeons plus those CPUs can't even overclock so screw that whereas the 6950X can OC well um, it handles all the tasks that it that I need it to handle and um, you know it just it looks and performs great the temps are awesome as you can see on the top left it's at about 50 degrees um, I don't have the individual cores listed because I just care about the average but um, you know, I can say confidently that all the threads, uh, well, not all, but like most of the threads are being used, uh, not fully, but about 50%, um, and the temperature is still pretty low. It's, you know, at like 50 or uh, 50 degrees Celsius or below, and uh, that's really good, and I have just an all-in-one cooler, um, the Kraken X60, so you don't need like some crazy custom water cooling setup but, but if you do get that then that would be awesome and you can throw a lot of voltage at it and that's the thing for my 4.3 gig uh, OC I actually have um, in fact for gaming I only needed um, gaming and benchmarks I only needed 1.27 volts um, and it was game stable but uh, as I said before the thing that I do is I render video while I'm gaming and for that to be stable, I needed to bump up the voltage to about 1.32, which is still pretty good, and the temps are more than manageable, so it's not an issue at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, this is uh, a, gr a fantastic CPU. I highly recommend it uh, if you're into multitasking. Um, and again, I repeat, I'm not saying that this is the best gaming-only CPU out there. It is not. Uh, if you're only into gaming and you want to build a gaming computer, do not get the CPU. It's just a waste of money. Uh, remember, with gaming, you want to have a higher clock speed as opposed to a higher number of cores. Whereas if you're into multitasking and you need several threads, then obviously getting more cores makes more sense. So that's pretty much my experience of the 6950X so far, guys. I just wanted to bring you my opinion and I think my opinion is pretty valuable because I actually have experience with these CPUs and although I'm not you know like a professional in terms of um, uh, running a server farm or whatnot I, I can definitely speak from years of experience um, that uh, having owned these um, you know hexacore, octacore and now decacore CPUs that um, why they're so good and why they're they're actually fun to have um, so you know, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments below and um, don't forget to hit that like button and uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.